my friends and welcome to Practice English with Paul. Before I start this video, I would like to say to all of you, thank you so much for subscribing to my YouTube channel, uh, to Facebook, for contact here as well. We've got uh, thousands of subscribers, but more importantly, so many of you have expressed your thanks. And that means a lot to me because I spend a lot of time trying to post uh, information that will be useful for you to help you learn English and effectively. Um, so many of you have given me the warmest compliments and again I thank you so much for that. So this, guy, this is for you guys here, this video uh, is something special because um, it's a weekly video, it's a new idea because so many of you send me messages and I wish I had time to answer every message uh, but it's impossible. I do promise to answer all of you when I find some free time. I will go through Facebook especially, it's like hello, how are you, where are you from? Uh, I want to have one-to-one -one contact with all of you um, because you're important. Um, but uh, I've noticed a lot of you make some common mistakes and a lot of you have the same questions. So I have an idea to make a weekly video to help all of you. So basically again, um, we're doing very well. We've got people from Algeria, Morocco, Kurdistan, Pakistan, India, the Middle East, Russia, Ukraine, Mexico, South America. It's amazing to have so many uh, members from around the world. It really is uh, really nice for me. Um, so again, this is for you guys, all right? So this is a, my weekly video. Um, we're going to look at some questions that people ask me and some common mistakes, okay? Because it's easier than like answering this 500 times. So, a lot of people ask me how to learn English. My friends, that is a very, very big question. How to learn English. It's like asking, how do you fly a plane? Um, how do you live? Um, it's such a big question. Well, to give you some advice, uh, because there are books on this, like big books on how to learn a language, and many books. Um, you know, if you, were, if you want to learn English very well, my first piece of advice, you need to practice. You have to practice. If you really want it, you will do it. You need textbooks. You need reference books, grammar, vocabulary. Uh, you need to have some guidance, maybe a teacher or somebody who can tell you what to learn and how to learn. You need to read, uh, you need to listen, watch films. Um, you need to do sometimes the boring things as well. Sit on your bed and learn vocabulary. It's boring, but you must do it. Um, ideally, you need to speak a lot as well. And I have a video ready, um, which I will post later, on how to improve your speaking skills with and without a native speaker. And it will really, really help you, I promise. Um, but it's a really, really big question, how to learn English. It's, there are so many different ways and teachers have their own personal methods. I have mine. Um, I think mine are effective. That's why I want to teach all of you. But generally, you need to practice get some books, um, find lots of information online. If you have a problem, type it into Google. If you have a problem with passives, type it into Google, or most importantly, ask me, uh, and I will do a video on passives. It's very easy, to be honest. Okay. Next question. A lot of people were asking me how to learn grammar. Um, <laughs> again, this is a very big question. Now, I will say this, uh, grammar is as important as vocabulary. Uh, of course, you need to study your grammar. What is very important, when you are doing um, grammar from an exercise book, a lot of the practice in exercise books is you just put words into gaps. You don't create the language yourself very much. That's easy. Anybody can do that. You really need to actively use and create that grammar yourself. Um, I have actually I have a book here. Um, this is my Bible. If you have followed me of a contactia and Facebook, you will have seen this. This is my Bible. My students know it's my Bible. Uh, Oxford English Grammar Course by Michael Swan. By chance, the book was right here. Um, here, again, if I just turn to sort of this page, um, 
again, good practice, but even on this page here, I don't know if you can see, it's just putting words uh, in a gap. That's extremely simple. Um, what you need to do, um, and I advise, is that when you do this exercise, make your own example based on this. So, for example, what do we have here? Um, you need to uh, put the infinitives of the verbs in the box. So, number one, I'd throw a party if I could think of enough people to invite. Um, so now I'm going to make my own sentence. Uh, I would like to have dinner with friends if I could think of enough people to invite. Um, I want some more... Um, I want to invite uh, some more friends to my school. So like this, you just sort of practice, make your own examples and repeat it again and again. And eventually it will stay here. The biggest problem sometimes with learning grammar, you do the exercises, turn the page, turn the next page and it's forgotten. Okay, that's the problem. You need to use it again and again and again. So if you do one or two exercises, um, you go to the next unit, sometimes just go back uh, and check. Uh, it's very, very important because there's so much. Um, also, I would say with grammar, be realistic. Don't try to learn too much in one time. Try to learn grammar for your level. Uh, a lot of teachers make this mistake uh, as well. When, for example, if they're teaching a low level course, pre-intermediate, for example, uh, and the teacher needs to introduce reported speech. So, I am happy. Paul said he was happy. Reported speech is a uh, quite a big area in English, and I have seen that some teachers, when they start explaining this, they explain everything, and the students' heads explode. Um, and that's not right. Um, so, for example, if your English is pre-intermediate, you study the grammar for pre-intermediate. Uh, Michael Swan, uh, the author of this book, he has an element, he has a uh, elementary, intermediate, and advanced book. So you get the book which is for you. Once you have finished it, once you understand the grammar from that, you are happy with it. You are confident. Go to the next level. And you can also ask me. You can write uh, some English to me, and I can assess uh, the level of your grammar as well and tell you what book that you need to buy. Okay. I hope that helps. Again, I think that requires a specific video. I will look at that in the future, but again, practice, 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 my friends. Uh, some people ask me what CAE is. Um, I posted um, uh, something recently about one of my fantastic uh, students, uh, Igor, um, actually you say Igor, not Igor, sorry, uh, who got an A at CAE. He's an absolute star, this guy. And I've got a girl, Tanya. She's doing CAE with me. They are in the same class. She will have her exam later this year. I have a class of CAE teachers at the moment. Absolutely wonderful guys. Um, they're going to do very well. And so I've mentioned CAE a few times in my posts. CAE is a Cambridge exam. It stands for Certificate in Advanced English. And unlike IELTS, if you know IELTS, if you don't, you can read my wall in Facebook. It's all there. Um, the CAE uh, test you for a specific level. IELTS test you from band zero to band nine. Uh, and you kind of find yourself on a scale. But CAE is here. It's very advanced English. The exam, it's a, an exam I recommend um, if you want to know how good your English is and you want a sort of certificate to say, I am advanced uh, to get a job or, or just for yourself, this is a good exam to do. It's very intensive, very intensive very difficult, um, but when you get an A at CAE, like uh, Yegor, for example, my student, it's just fantastic. 15 years old and an A, and I'm proud of the guy. Uh, I'm proud of all my previous students that have passed this exam. Um, but yes, it's uh, Cambridge in Advanced English. Uh, I'm sure if you, uh, whichever country you are from, um, have a look for a local Cambridge exam center. Um, and you can phone up and ask for some information. If not, you can go to the Cambridge website, which I will put uh, down below uh, under my video, okay? Or you can, again, you can go to my Facebook or for contact page, the information is there uh, with the links, okay? So I hope that helps. 
So that's three basic questions answered. Some mistakes, let's have a look. Um, now, this word, um, I love this word. This is a fantastic ad well, adjective, thorough, adverb, because of the L-Y, thoroughly. It's a fantastic word that a lot of people don't use, but I have noticed some people using it on Facebook of a contactia and uh, not using it quite correctly. It has sort of two uses. Um, if you want to say very with a verb of emotion, we can say I thoroughly enjoyed. It's a nice callocation. A callocation is the combination of words that fit together. Uh, and some words do not fit together. You need to learn those by heart, and that's one of the most difficult things about learning a language. But I thoroughly enjoyed, I really enjoyed. But thoroughly also means very carefully, in detail. So if I give you some instructions, uh, maybe you need to be, uh, install a new television, read the instructions, read them thoroughly. Read them very carefully, every word in detail. Uh, when you go into an exam, you need to read the questions thoroughly. Don't miss a point or you will have problems. Another mistake many people make is the word graduate. They say, I graduated university. You need the preposition from. I graduated from university. If you're American, you can graduate from high school, but not in Britain. We don't graduate from school. We finish school, but you graduate from university. Now, this, surprisingly, is a very common mistake, uh, which is surprising because it's quite basic. If you have your main verb, here we have want. Want is plus an infinitive. An infinitive is like uh, this, to learn, to do. It's always with to, not, not always, but most of the time. Um, now, the main verbs in English can be plus infinitive or plus ing, like gerund. Um, for example, uh, let's take enjoy. I enjoyed playing football. But want is plus infinitive, not gerund. How do we know? We don't, we need to learn them all by heart. Thankfully for me, it's natural. But of course, unfortunately for you guys, you need to study lists and lists of vocabulary and practice again and again to understand is it infinitive or gerund. But you need to have the two here, you need it. Okay, so I want to learn, I want to learn English. Dear Paul, please help me, I want to learn English. I want to practice English, I want to speak English. Now. Staying with the word want, a lot of you say, Paul, I want you to teach me English. Now, I will teach you a little bit of British culture. Now, um, in British culture, we don't like to be very direct. Uh, we don't think it's very polite. It's not sort of very kind. We like to go around. Um, so we use words and structures to sound like politer. For example, it's better to say, I would like, now you know this, I would like you to teach me English. I would like to speak English better. Could you help me? Or please help me. That's a lot better, would like. Want is just very, very direct, okay? Um, last mistake. Some of you wrote to me, how do you do? And I said, fine. And you said, no, your job. I was like, ah, okay. What do you do? There's a big difference. How do you do means, hello, how are you? Um, like, how are you doing at the moment? Um, if you have what, what do you do? It means, what's your job? What is your profession? Again, that's a good question. If you want to be more polite, we can say, and, and actually more natural, we can say, what do you do for a living? Uh, I work as a teacher for a living. For a living means what brings me money. 
um, like what is what I do, my occupation. I hope that's helped. I hope I have answered those questions. So my friends, if you have some problems, again, uh, write some uh, comments on my wall, send me some comments. I will do my best to answer them when I can. Unfortunately, there are so many hours in the day uh, and I don't have enough, but I will do my best. I have some time tonight. I've got some more videos to make. Uh, and in the evening, I will answer a lot of your questions so we can speak one-on-one. -on -one. Um, so, my friends, thank you for watching my weekly video. This is the very first one. Um, just to finish, um, I'll give you some personal information about myself, because some of you ask constantly, who am I, where am I from, etc, etc. So, my name is Paul, and on Facebook of a contact here, that is my picture. It's not uh, some person I found on the street and took something. It is me. Uh, I'm old, I am 36 years old, uh, I'm from London, but at the moment I live in Moscow, Russia, where I am working and teaching English. Um, my personal interests, well, I like going to the gym, I like kind of exercising and, and running, um, I do some boxing sometimes, um, I really like um, sort of painting and writing, uh, but mainly I like teaching English, I love reading grammar books. Uh, I like to, um, I want to try to be the best teacher I can be, and it's like a hobby as well. Um, what other information can I give? Um, I have no hair, and I am a man. I think that's enough. If you have any more questions you want to know, please ask. So again, my friends, thank you so much. Have a wonderful Friday, um, if you're watching this on Friday, uh, because it's now Friday the... 31st of August and tomorrow is the first and also remember this uh, fantastic little expression when it's the first day of every month we say pinch and a punch for the first of the month all right see you later goodbye